All right, hi everyone. So we're going to be talking about if statements again today. And today we will move on past the introduction to if semantics. All right, so I will point out that there are some really good reference for this, including the Java 8 Fundamentals book that you can find at the library using either of those two uh, links right there. There's some good links uh, and references about Boolean logical operators, as well as the basics uh, regarding the if else statement. And um, if you need a little bit more practice with respect to the scanner class, which is sometimes very useful with uh, if else statements and, and other programs, you can find it at uh, this site right here. All right, so we're going to take a look at the syntax of an if statement or a, 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 a conditional statement or a selection statement. It begins with the keyword if, and then typically we'll put parentheses right afterwards, and inside of it will be basically it's a question or it's the, the core of a question. We call it a Boolean expression, and this will be a uh, uh, some sort of mathematical expression that maybe includes an I, uh, equal or uh, less than or equal or a greater than or not equals in there. And then afterwards, there's going to be a curly brace right here, and then there'll be a curly brace over here. And then in between those two curly braces are some statements. And the statements are separated by semicolons like this. And those statements are executed if the result of the Boolean expression is true. And if the Boolean expression result is not true, then those things are not done. Now, some uh, if else statements or if statements will have a second component. And this second component would execute in the event that this was not true. So if this first part, the if with the Boolean expression right here, is found to be false, then this will be examined. If it's found to be true, then the next else if or anything else that comes after it will be ignored. But if this is if this over here is found to be false, then we'll move on to the next basic the next question in the list from top to bottom. Okay, and then here we're going to ask a question about whether the thing that's found inside of the parentheses right here is true or not. And if this is true, then the statements that are found within the, the curly braces right here will be executed. And then so on and so forth until you get to sort of the end of the list here where you'll find maybe another else if right here. And, and so if all of these were found to be false, and all the ones in between are found, found to be false, then the question here would be asked, is this true? And then if it's true, then this will be executed um, or, or run. And then if it's not, then we'll move on to, oh, perhaps another component right here referred to as the sort of the default option or the default else condition. All right. And, and this kicks in without any question associated with it. If all of the things up here were found to be false, all of these other right, things right here, then whatever is found inside of the parentheses, sorry, the, the curly braces right there after the else will be executed. All right, whether, yeah, basically it'll get executed. All right, now to visualize an if, an else if, etc., cetera, um, series of operations or questions or statements, uh, you basically start with, a beginning and you end with an end and in between there are the individual boolean expression questions so the question here and a question there and a question there and so this is the first one right here and if this is found to be true the first question's answer is true then these statements get executed they get executed and then we move on we go on past we skip all the other ones and move to the end if this was found to be false so we move on here. Then we go to the next question and we ask this question. And if this one is found to be true, then we, we do this statement and that statement, and then we move past all the way to the end. And so on and so forth until we get to the else component here. This is the default right here at the very end. Okay, that only executes if every other question that was in here was found to be false. All right. So the semantics of the if statement. Consider that a single if statement as consisting of an if branch. So branches mean sort of choices that you can make. A possible empty list of else if branches. Okay, so we might have 
this branch and then an else if and then maybe an other else if and then an optional else branch so you've got you've got an if you've got an else if you maybe have another else if and then you've got an else okay and any of these will allow the flow of the program to go one direction or another one of these directions depending on what's true and what's false now at runtime the branches of the if statement are executed from top to bottom we always start with the top one and then if the top one is found to be false we move on to the ones below we only evaluate the condition of a branch if those conditions of the preceding branches were evaluated to be false the first branch whose condition executes or eva evaluates to be true gets its body wrapped in the curly braces executed so we only execute the things inside the curly braces if the things in the parentheses were found to be true after this execution all later branches are ignored only the first satisfying branch is executed later branches are ignored let's take a look at this so we have the uh, a variable called i it's of type integer and it has a value of negative four we now have two three a four-part if statement the first question right here asks if i is less than zero then print out i is negative the next one says else so if it wasn't if i is less than 10 then print out i is less than 10 and if that wasn't the case then if i is equal to 10 then print i is equal to 10 and then if none of those were true then say i is greater than 10 that's the 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 structure of this if else if and else if statement with an else at the very end right here what we see right here is i is less sorry i is equal to negative four which means it's less than zero so only this part right here will be executed all of the other parts right here will be will be um, ignored and that and so the outcome of here will be that i is negative will be printed out all right let's take a look at another example where i is equal to five so if i is equal to five then the first if component right here i where we ask the question is i less than zero well that's found to be false so we move on to the next one else if i is less than 10 is i equal five less than 10 the answer is yes so this is found to be true so then we will execute the things that are inside of the, the uh, curly braces that are in here okay so i is less than 10 and we will ignore these two right here we ignore the top one here because it's false we ignore the other two on the bottom right here because this is the only one that gets executed so the output will be i is less than 10. so no satisfying branches and no else part then nothing is executed let's take a look at what happens in this case so i is equal to 12. so we've got an if we've got an else if and we've got another else if the else that we had earlier is gone okay so there's no else part right here so in this case i is equal to 12. this right here is false so this doesn't get executed uh, less than 10 that's going to be false so that doesn't get executed i is equal to 10 that's false the answer to that is false and that's not going to get executed oops that's not going to get executed either so nothing in this particular case gets executed nothing at all so this will be blank there will be no output to the console no output to the terminal so here's another case no satisfying branches then the else part if it is there is executed so we have i is equal to 12. that's our integer our variable right here we test it for the first case that's going to be false so that doesn't get executed the next one else if this is false that doesn't get executed i is equal to 10 that's false because it's 12 right that's false so that doesn't get executed finally we have this default condition right here and this will executed this will get executed if all the other preceding uh, statements are found to be false so it has to be printed out because everything else was false so it will say i is greater than 10. so you have to be really careful about the messages or, or the actions that would be taken uh, in here based on the, the internal logic of everything else that's going on so we will see that i is greater than 10. it's the else here 
that gets executed, all the other ones get ignored. Well, they get, they don't run. All right, a two-way if statement without an else part. So if the radius, notice we put parentheses here, okay, like that. So we capture the, the question that we want to ask in here. If the radius is greater than or equal to zero, then we are going to take the area and uh, set it to, and we'll, we'll imagine that this was set up, this variable was set up earlier and radius was determined earlier, okay? So if radius is greater than or equal to zero. So we're doing a calculation for area based on a radius that maybe the, the user has directly inputted. Radius should be positive, so this, this is a good thing, positive or zero. Um, so area is going to be radius multiplied by radius or radius squared multiplied by pi. And then system out print line, the area for the circle is. So here what we're doing is, is we are basically saying that if the input was valid, radius is positive or zero, then we can actually do uh, the rest of the work that we want to do, and we will basically ignore any input that was negative. So an if statement with the missing else part is equivalent to an if statement with an else part that does nothing, which is basically this, okay? So you could be explicit about this, which is actually generally a good idea. Um, and so you can even put a statement in here that says do nothing. And this is actually, if you're working in a team, this is a really good indication that you knew what you were doing, that there was something intentional about this. There was a lot of really good things about writing this out explicitly and explicitly saying in here that nothing is happening. The compiler will take care about optimizing this later on. This is a good way of setting it up so that you can develop in an explicit and careful way. All right, let's take a look at this again. Let's take a look at another example, a multi-way if statement or multi-branch if statement with an else part. All right, so we have, uh, we're doing a calculation based on mapping of um, grading, numeric grading scores to letter grades. All right, and so basically what we're doing right here is we're saying that um, uh, score has been set earlier. It was calculated, it was entered something. And so we've got a, a, a variable called score. And if it's greater than, than 80, then we are going to set the student, we're gonna say that the student got an A. If it wasn't greater than 80, but it was greater than 70, then we're gonna say that the student gets a B. If the student's uh, mark was not greater than 70 or 80, but was greater than C, or sorry, than 60, then the student will get a C. But otherwise, no matter what uh, the student got in terms of a numeric score, so if it's anything under 60.0, then the student will get an F. This is a way to structure that and set it up, all right? You could also set it up so that um, it was set up like this, so that you could have uh, if score is greater than or equal to 80, then you do this, else. Okay, so we've got an, an, an else just like this, and then inside of the else we have if, and then we have an else in there, and then inside of the else we have an if. This is basically going to be equivalent, okay? So let's uh, let's let's draw out the flowchart. Let's see what it looks like, okay? Because it is equivalent. Um, so what we do right here is we start. Okay, so we start. And we'll, we'll imagine that we've set the score in here earlier. Okay, so we're going to set score. Oops, a little bit small, but score is set in there. Then we go in here, and we're going to ask to see if score is greater than or equal to 80. I'm going to make the diamond right here. All right. And then if if it's true, whoops, there we go. If it's true versus false. If it's true, then I'm going to print out, uh, let's see, I'll have to print out A like that. All right. If it's false, then I want to look at score greater than or equal to 70. The diamond like that. And we do a true there. B. If it was false, then we're going to ask for a score greater than or equal to 60. The diamond, like that. True. C, like that. And then, uh, let's see, otherwise this is going to be F. F. 
and this is going to be stop like that okay that's the basic flowchart a little messy but that that gets the point across all right there's another way of doing it where what you do is you set the letter grade ahead of time you set it to a default condition of f which doesn't sound very nice but you default to f when you set up the um, um, the string variable and and the assumption here is that if the student didn't get an f then the if else statements in here will take care of updating it from f to something else so we're assuming the student failed if the student got an 80 then the student's value letter grade whoops this should be that should be letter grade like that letter grade should be equal to a if it was over 70 but uh, less than 80 then um, then it should be b and if it's over 60 then it should be c and that's that's another way of getting around it okay so in this case since we had uh, already assigned initial default value of f to the variable letter grade then the branch conditions evaluate to false and the default value will be kept all right and there you go that is a uh, quick overview of basically how if statements are structured mm -hmm.